Uh, do let me know if the screen is visible. You can let me know on the chat. Yes, or... ma'am, visible. Great. All right, so we can start off the session. So just to briefly recap, so what exactly is our catalog? So uh, basically, when we whenever we go to insert and we select furnish, and we choose any of the items from here, and let's say this base unit. So basically, whatever you see in the schedule opens up here. This is the catalog that will open up in your design. And in a similar way, we have the material catalog as well. So when you are applying materials, let's say to this carcass, you'll get a catalog for materials similarly. This will also happen when you're adding hard like handles, different types of countertop materials, et cetera. So all of that is a catalog. So today we'll be going over how to edit the properties of these particular SKUs, these particular materials and objects, et cetera. The part one of the earlier of the webinar for catalog management will be in uh, will be recorded. It's there's a recorded link for that. You can ask your uh, customer success person to share it with you. So to recap, whatever management we do of the catalog is done through the admin portal. So you can access this by going to a design dashboard and selecting the go to admin portal link. Now, when you will enter your admin portal page and you can either select catalog here or you can click on the catalog option here to access catalog related things. And once you do so, you can select from the drop down menu here. You can either select the types of categories here, catalog, or if you want to choose finishes, let's say you can select that section. And you can choose from any of these items here. So suppose I'm just um, choosing, I want to go the acrylic, um, the acrylic uh, catalog. I'll just select that. And then we'll be entering that particular catalog. So uh, whenever we want to edit the SKU properties, like the edit the mid properties, let's say. So we go to that particular thumbnail and we select edit skew option again to so save. And here we can click on and we can go to edit skew properties. You can select this. So in this modal that opens up, you can see that the name is mentioned. You can see the model number, the thickness, etc. However, what you may notice that is that you are unable to update any of these. You won't be able to update the properties of this. Uh, the reason being is that this is not owned. You may notice that this particular thumbnail doesn't have an owned label on it, while these three, uh, these uh, first two laminates do have an owned label on it. So, what exactly is an owned item or an owned skew? It's basically what has been added by either someone in your organization or it has been added globally by Infernia itself. So when you own a particular SKU, that means when you select edit SKU and you click on edit SKU properties, that means you'll be able to edit the name of this particular, you'll be able to edit the properties of this. And also you'll be seeing that there are some extra tabs available. So in this case, in this unknown SKU, you can see only the properties, you can only see the tags, and you can see the price, which you can set. You can set the price for that. However, for an owned SKU, you will be able to do much more than that. You can select this and you can change things like the name, um, description, viewing order, the thickness, uh, brand, you can select from this. And material, if you select here, you will be able to change the material properties or you can even change the base color or texture that you want to select from you can select upload and you can choose whatever uh, material that you want so that's the difference so what if you want to make these particular changes to this laminate but you can't in order to do that you need to own this so to own this you need to clone this particular item so what you can do is you can either select this draw this three dot button here click on edit group and then select clone group 
And then in the model that opens up, you can select the subcategory to which you want to clone this to. So this particular catalog is there. So I'll just, this is the current one, which is open right now. You can just select that and select clone. I'll just name it as copy of Cherry Red. And always remember to clone the sales channel mapping and prices if you want this to be available in, in your design as well. Then select clone. So now you get a copy of this, which is owned. And now you can make whatever changes that you like to it. So just fetching the SKU details for this. And now you can make all the changes that you like to this particular item. You can select the brand. You can even change the texture. Like if you want to change the texture or the um, anything, you can click on this particular item icon. And then you can replace with, you can even replace it with some other material. So I'll just uh, click on this uh, screenshots and I'll choose any material that I've ordered. Select open. Now we can load this instead and you can select save changes. In a similar manner, when you can, this even applies to your objects. So let's say you want to edit the base unit, go to furniture and select base unit. Now, since all of these have been added by us into the global catalog, you will be able to make these changes. You can see all of these are owned. All this all, this will all apply to your, um, all of the modular units. So if you select shutter units, you click on edit skew and you click on edit skew properties. Then you can see the name is here and you'll also be able to change the height, width and depth, etc. So you can even make the changes here itself. And those uh, changes are going to reflect in your uh, design as well this particular one. So suppose this base one shutter is 300, 560, 720. You can change the height to be something else and it will reflect accordingly. And in a similar manner, you can change the display image if you want to. And you can change things like the top view image, the tags. A pricing we'll go into later on in this session. But for now, you can, the basic idea is that since something is owned, you'll be able to make these changes. And uh, for these are for modular units. Now, if you were to go to non modular units, like other 3D objects, like a SketchUp item, let's say we go to this sofa. Now, you can see that if I go to the sofa category, you can see that some of these are not uh, owned. Can I ask something here? Uh, Oh, yes, yeah, so could you actually uh, like what's the question exactly? If it is, uh... yes, you uploaded some uh, uh, laminate shades regarding to the, that. I wanted to ask you that shades are seamless or have some uh, limited length or width? So. You can set the length and width as per the finish. Or, of uh, the... How can I set it as a seamless finish? Uh, you can keep that uh, question to the end. I can answer that in the end of the session, right? Okay. So you can keep that to the end uh, because I can explain that, how to do it seamlessly and how to asset in whatever length and width that you want, right? So, yes. So in this particular, so uh, we were on the topic of the... Um, Change, editing the properties of the 3D models, which are not cabinets and wardrobes. So let's say these are some 3D models as well. So none of these you can see are owned. You won't be able to, if you click on um, edit skew properties of this yellow sofa, you will not be able to make any change whatsoever to these items because these have been added into the global catalog by another organization. So that is not owned by the org you, that's owned by them. So in order to own this, again, you need to clone the particular SKU. So let's say I, you can either do this by cloning this entire group, or let's say from this drop-down menu, you just want to clone this one seater. 
So you just have to set it to that particular one. So let's say you want a two seater to be cloned and you want to change the properties. Select that, then click on edit, select clone skew. So you can do this either to the same thumbnail, to a new thumbnail, or you can do it to any thumbnail within the catalog. So I'll just do it to a new thumbnail. Click on submit. And you can check these two boxes and select submit. Keep the name, specify the name, etc. And now you will be getting a copy here. So now you can see that this particular thumbnail, this is, is owned by you. So when you edit this, you'll even be able to edit the skew structure, which is another thing you will not be able to do if it is not owned by you. So here it is grayed out, this option. But here you will have the option of even editing the structure, like the color, et cetera, of this particular sofa. And when you click on the properties, you'll be able to make changes to this as well, including the 3D model, the type of 3D model you're uploading. You can replace it with another model as well. You can change the display image of the same, et cetera. So if, if something is not owned by you, always make sure to clone it. And in that way, you can edit your skew properties as well, both for finishes and objects. Now, I was mentioning that you uh, would be able to change the properties for the skew structure. So now skew structure is different from skew properties. Let's say if I, the skew properties are whatever um, written properties, like the height, width, and depth is whatever I had set up here. And this is the one, like this is a one seater, et cetera. But you are not able to change the color of this model or anything like that. So skew structure is something you don't have to change for the finish because you can do that in properties itself. It's a 2D image. But in the case of 3Ds like cabinets and uh, other objects like this, you'll need to, like if you want to make any changes to that, to the catalog, you need to open the skew structure there for that. So if, let's go to an owned thumbnail and we click on we, to do that we click on the edit skew option here and we select edit skew structure now what happens is that you will be entering a particular um, you will be entering up something called the seller portal it's called the component editor portal right and here you can actually make the change required so now if i click here I can, you will be seeing all the options that you would normally see for your uh, design. The only difference is that if you set it up in the component editor, that change will be the default properties of this particular sofa that you can add to your design whenever you want without making any changes. So you can add whatever changes that you want here. And you can even change the color by selecting meshes and materials, et cetera. You can click on that uh, change and then you can select acrylic, uh, you can select a fabric and then you can apply it here. And unlike uh, in Furnia's design where you don't have to save anything because everything keeps getting auto-saved, in this particular case, you need to, you actually need to select save here in order to make changes to this so a pop-up will come up asking if you want to change if you want to set this particular image as the thumbnail so you can select that if that's what you want to identify as and then you can click on save and then you can go ahead and close the component editor you can select leave for this and now when you refresh your page uh, this is supposed to be changed I'll just refresh the page. It's called copy of Adele, this chair. So I just scroll back down. And now you can see that it has, the thumbnail has been set changed and also I've uh, made the changes to this. So now when I go back to my design and I open it, if your design is already open, then you must refresh the page so that the changes will be loaded. So when you go to, let's say, 3D, and then you add furnish, et cetera, and then you click on the sofa.
now when you select this now by default this changed uh, this changed uh, so far will appear in your catalog and if you want to add this in the future as well then adding it in the component editor by adding editing the skew structure is a good way to go about it now the most important thing the most important use case for this is not mainly for this 3d model but it is for things like cabinets uh, wardrobes modeler units etc now let's assume that we are adding a base unit but we want to make a change to that particular base unit like the existing one that we have not we're not adding a new one so let's say i'm just adding a base unit in this case i'll just be selecting the first one just for um, ease of use so you may have noticed that i had made some changes in the skew properties uh like of, uh, like five minutes ago and that's why these new changes have been added here so that also would um, require like that also will be taken into account when you edit skew properties but another way to do is suppose i want by default that i want the carcass color to change and i want the shuttle color to change as well and i want some more changes to this so let's see first what kind of cabinet this is uh so you can go to the information section in the left hand panel and you can see that the name is my screen is not visible my screen is not visible no proper visible now someone else is presenting this screen one second please explain this part the screen is not visible ma'am okay someone's someone uh let me just check yes. who it is if anyone's accidentally sharing their screen even on phone i think this is a phone screen please yes. um stop sharing it uh yakub chauhan if uh you're sharing the screen please uh, stop sharing it it's not getting pinned uh i'll just pin it for everyone my particular screen Ma'am, please explain that one from the beginning after the sofa. Yes, uh, yes, sure. Uh, just let me know if it's visible now. Yeah, ma'am. Now it's visible. Yes. Just give me a minute. Thank you. Uh... Right now, two screens are visible. Like one of Yakov and another one of you. I'll just uh, remove this. All right. Uh, how about now? Is it visible now? I'm not uh, not able to pin unpin it for some reason. The other screen. So. If he is there, please uh, unpin the screen. But uh, this my screen is visible right now, right? Yeah, it's visible right now. Yes, just give me a minute. One second. All right. Uh, yes. So how I had left off with the sofa part. Um, at which point were you not able to see the screen so that I can repeat myself? Ma, please start from beginning for this this unit. Yes. So so yes. So you uh, you might have understood how I made the changes in the admin portal for the sofa, right? And I had uh, added it here by default. Yes. Sir. Yes. So the same method can be used for your modeler units, and in fact, the main use case for that is your modeler units. So when I go to I select furnish now and I click on base unit and let's say I am choosing maybe this um, second item, right? The 400 with 560, uh, 720. I click on this thumbnail and then I select this. Now, what if I want this particular unit? I don't want it to come in blue by default and I don't want it to have this shutter color or basically this particular look. 
So this is something by editing the SKU structure, you can change its properties in the admin portal and whatever you add in the future will be that particular color and size, etc. So when you go to, when you open the information tab in the left hand panel, so you can see that which group it belongs to. You can see the subcategory shutter units. You can see the categories base unit. The base one shutters this particular SKU name. So we just look for that in the admin portal. So we go to admin portal again. The screen is still visible, right? Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes. okay. okay, fine. So we can go to the catalog. We can go to base unit. And the group and the shutter unit is we are in that correct category that we have saw on the information button. So the SKU is this 400 width one. We have to choose that if we want to make changes to that. And then we select this particular edit SKU icon against the same. And then we click on edit SKU structure. Now, what will uh, happen is the same thing that happened with the sofa. You'll be able to make whatever changes that you want to this. So you can click on this. And let's say external finish. I want it by default to be Siberian oak. And I want some, you can change everything, core material, uh, internal finish, etc. You can even change, make all of those changes, lemon yellow or some other color. You can add shelves. It's everything that you can do in the design, you can do it here as well. So I just want it by default to look like this. And the shutter also I want to change. I can make whatever changes I like, basically. Right. Or I can give it some other color also. And now, uh, once, once I've made the changes required, again, you need to select save. So you'll be able to see the flow plan also of this and whatever elevation views you can create out of this, you can. It's basically, it's just the changes you make to this that are important. So once you do that, you can click on save. You can also a common case, use case for this is changing the shelf reveal. So you can click inside the partition. You can go inside that particular partition and you can change the shelf reveal to something more or less. So now once you do that, you can click on save for this. Set previous skew thumbnail and you can click on save. Then you can go ahead and close this, select leave, right? And now I have, since I've made this to an existing item, like I've made this to an existing object in the catalog, what I need to do is, since I have this design already existing and it's open, so what I need to do first is I need to refresh the SKU. Otherwise, the changes will not be loaded. To refresh the SKU, you can click on production, click on settings, and in the left-hand panel, select Refresh Cache. You have the option then to select. You can see everything is up to date. If that is not the case, then you can even uh, refresh this page. Go to your 3D and... Uh, Production, settings, refresh cache. If everything is up to date, then that means the settings have been updated. So all you need to do is now load that particular unit. So I go to insert, I go to furnish, and then I reload the unit to which I made the changes. Click on base unit, open this drop down menu, and then I select this. So now you can see that this new, it has been updated accordingly. You can click on this thumbnail now. And you can, now you can see the base unit with all the changes that I've made in the component editor have been has been added. So that is the use case for the seller portal. You can do this for any 3D object that you have in your catalog or that you want to add or own. So that's how you can create the edit SKU structure. But not only you can you do this in like for one at a time, you don't have like let's say you want to 
make changes to these the construction the materials etc the shelf reveal for all this in bulk you want to do this let's say for all of your base units etc then you can you have the option of even doing bulk edit so when you go to your admin portal let's suppose i want to create i want to add make these changes to all of these particular cabinets here so to do that you need to select all of those so if i just select this particular um, checkbox that means only this 400 with one has been selected so you can see here that selected items one skew has been selected out of 69 in the catalog uh but supposing if you want to select this entire group of skews then you need to select the checkbox against the group name so now you can see that seven skews have been added if I hadn't done that, you'll see zero SKUs have been added. So if you click here, all seven in that particular group have been uh, selected for editing. You can even select edit all SKUs. Supposing you want to make this change, in that way you can make uh, you can uh, choose as many groups or SKUs as you want. And even draw units, you can select groups or SKUs. You can see the number of SKUs getting selected. So it's 11 here and seven over here, et cetera. So if you want to make this change to all of your cabinets in bulk, then when it comes to editing SKU structure, always ensure that you are selecting the base units, the units separately from the corner units. Corner units are different and the regular units are different because their construction is also different. So it, you won't be able to change them both at the same time. So if I selected even one corner unit, and then I click now to edit them in um, bulk, the structure, you click on bulk actions and you click on bulk edit skew structure. So now in the model that opens up, they'll show you all the ones that you've selected, which are all of these items. And now if you go to proceed to editing now, it'll tell you that the selection is a mix of corner units. So you cannot do that. So you, what you can do is you can close this window and you can deselect whatever corner units you have. And then you can try again. You can go to bulk edit skew structure. You can, if these are what you want, you can check this. Then you can, you can see 18 have been added. Then you can click on proceed to editing. So now when you select that, you will be getting an option to change all of these items. So you in cabinet itself, you can change the overall width, depth, height, back panel offset, etc. You can change the carcass material, various types, all at the same time for these. If you click on add skew, then you can click on the category, the subcategory, so on and so forth. Like let's say this is score panel. And then you can go ahead and click on submit. Just I'll just choose a BWR ply, just select the skew and click on submit. So now you can see this change I've made is in green. So you can do this for these are like at the cabinet level uh, changes. Whatever if you select this, you see in this cabinet level. Now for partition level changes in the admin portal, if you scroll up in this uh, window. You can click on the partition tab. Now, if I select add partition, let's say. So basically, you'll be seeing something called partition ID. So let's say I want to make, I want to change the shelf reveal for this overall partition. So which means um, that is the outermost partition and it's currently 50. So in admin, that means that um, the outermost partition here is partition one. So you just have to type in that particular name that you can do by copy pasting this ID and typing in into the field. If suppose it is partition one is to one like this, that is this particular partition that you will be adding it. You will be making the change to that is partition one is to one. So then let's say shelf reveal instead of 50, I want it to be zero. So you can make all of these changes. You can even set in hanger rods. 
the sh you can change the shutter mechanism uh, handle types etc you can make all of these changes in bulk panel also you can if you add a panel you can change the panel name shelf type etc and whatever is within these so when you're adding a panel or a partition it doesn't mean that you're actually adding a partition to it it just means you're adding the properties for that particular partition so once you've made these changes you can select proceed to confirmation throughout this change you can always click on reset changes also but if you don't want to do that you can click on proceed to confirmation now whatever is modified is in green you can click on show only modified fields and all that will be shown in green cabinet have made some change you can make all those changes even carcass material i want to make a change let's say i'll just change the carcass material also in bulk or shutter material top finish material or i'll add it for this um, carcass here itself submit so if you select proceed to confirmation then you won't be able to make changes here you'll have to go back in order to make those particular changes so then when you select proceed to confirmation then you can recheck whether these are all proper then you can select publish changes and exit and now the request to edit SKU structure has been successfully added then you can do the same thing to corner units simultaneously so this um, when the changes have been made in bulk you'll be notified in your email that it's been changed and then only you can go back to your design and make those particular change like you can test whether it is been implemented or not so that is how to bulk edit SKU structures now we'll be touching upon setting up pricing mainly we'll be focusing on the finishes and we'll be focusing on objects especially cabinetry so for finishes it's simple so if we go to the catalog and we go to finishes and we we can set price for any of these whether you own the SKU or not so for, suppose for this i just select edit SKU properties for the pricing then click on the pricing sales channel tab and then in default price you have the option of you have the option of typing in the default price for the same i'm just typing in a random number and you can set the default unit etc and tax margin and so on and so forth so for whoever subscribed to the basic design plan uh, making pricing the furniture sorry pricing the finishes will not make a difference to you because that would be considered when uh being when you're doing the per component pricing of cabinets so i think a better example to take would be for the cabinets itself let's say it's setting a price for a base unit i choose a skew that i want to set the price for and i click on edit skew click on edit skew properties then you click on pricing sales channel now for whoever has been uh, using design like the basic design subscription so that will be they will have only the option of price is a completely built unit what that means is that you will be setting the price for that entire unit so let's say i type in i'm just typing in 2000 for this so 20000 and since it's at a completely built unit you can either define it as per unit or you can define it by the unit area of that entire unit so it's not the uh, materials used in it but it's rather the square foot area or square meter area of that entire um, unit that you are putting in there once you do that you can set in any price that you you can set any unit that you want put in your tax and your margin and then your selling price gets automatically calculated here if you want to exclude certain items for pricing you can do that so if you click here select items you want to exclude the handle from the pricing 
and certain appliances also you can do that as well and then uh, once you do that you can select close now this is default pricing now we also have something called uh, constituent elements so for whoever has been subscribed to at least advanced pricing or cut list manufacturing then they will be using price from constituent elements so when you select this your a pop-up will ask whether you want to continue with this uh, change because it's um it means you're you'll be changing the logic of the entire pricing so you can click on change cpu status so now we'll say price just sum of all the constituent elements which means you'll have to separately set up the price for each and every all like the ply that is used for it the hardware that is used for it the finishes that are used for it etc so you'll have to do that for all those separately and then whatever is the sum total price for it being calculated it will all be considered for this cabinet so you can choose between both and depending on which plan you're using that will be accessible to you one or both now we also have something called advanced pricing options so let's see if we click on this particular menu you can see something called um, default sales channel so this is what appears to you by default so and here is another one called which i have added myself it's called the bangalore sales channel so you can see something called sales channel you can see something called pricing mode also in which you can choose between um, custom and default so what is this difference in that now let's suppose that uh, one organization is selling the same item in different cities like bangalore kolkata delhi etc that me and all of those items so they'll have different prices according to the cities in which they are being sold in so those are the different sales channels that you can set up different prices for and within each city supposing you have many stores so that those will be that those can be determined by price fields so i'll just show an example how do we add a sales channel or a city in this case or a price field or a store so to do that i close this i go to sales channel and i click on to add a sales channel click on add sales channel and then you can just set in the name of the channel that you want and you can choose whatever price field whatever stores you want or price fields you want assigned to this you can choose these also for now this is default and this custom is the ability to set in a different one you can put in terms and conditions any preferences whichever you want and you can even put a logo for each um, sales channel and then you can select add so now we have bangalore and delhi now if you want to add multiple stores or price fields those are called price fields select sales channel preferences here and click on add price field put in the name and the description of the same select add and you can keep adding as many as you like and these can be assigned to different uh, sales channels etc so you can select add for all of these and then you can click on you can even edit these later on by selecting them and you can delete them also once you do that you can select close and now you can assign whichever you want whichever stores you want to these two sales channels as well so bangalore i'll click on this edit and here i'll just type in i'll just now these new stores have been added to these price fields i'll just select those select update and do the same for the price fields for delhi as well select update now when we go back to our unit base unit and i select edit skew properties and click on advanced pricing options now you can see that 
you can set different prices for each and every one of them. So let's say I go to Bangalore. I click on the edit icon against each one. And then I click on, if I set it to default, then it'll just be based on whatever I've put here. But if I want to add a different one, then I can go ahead and type in the new changes. So every everything that I want to be like uh, to be taken from here, I will be setting as default. And if I don't want that, I'll set as custom. Once you finish making the changes, making sure the selling price is correct, click on sell, you know, click on the tick mark under actions, and then those will be changed. And then you can add another sales channel if you want this to be added to another city, etc. And then here also you can make whatever changes that you like. Set it to custom, add in whatever changes that you want. Select the tick mark. It's been updated successfully. And then you can go ahead and update. And then after that, you can select close. So now these changes will show up in your pricing quotation as well. So those are uh, so that's the basics into the advanced pricing and the sales channels and price fields. So bid on the for constituent pricing. If you set up the pricing for whatever materials are going into this. So suppose I'm setting up the price for this. So I need to find I need to locate the materials for this, the finishes for this in the catalog and set pricing for that as well. And even for the handle that is being used here. So for that, you can go to admin and just like you did for your base unit, you can go to finishes, uh, select the material that you want to add it for. This is not the correct one, but I'm just showing an example. Click on edit skew properties, pricing sales channel, and determine the pricing, the default unit, et cetera, of whatever that you want. That is if you have the default, that is if you're setting it by default, Otherwise, if you have multiple sales channels, then use this one itself. Don't, if you're just using one type of pricing, just you can go ahead with default pricing also. You can select update. And then you can select, once you update it, you can select close. And you can do this for your hardware as well. So let's say handle also, you can do this cabinet handles, edit skew properties. This will be per unit only because it's a handle that has been loaded externally. And just type in one number here. And then select update. So now if you are using this handle anywhere in the cabinet, and your cabinet is priced according to constituent elements, that means those changes will be incorporated as per the materials. But this kind of uh, component changes will be only happen for you if you are subscribed to advanced pricing or above. So you can not only sell you can not only add the pricing for these various components, like one by one, but again, you can bulk edit pricing. So let's say for furniture, base unit, I select all of these items for which I want to set up a price. And then I go to bulk actions and I select bulk edit. Bulk edit skew structure is different. Bulk edit no normal properties are different. So properties like uh, brand, name, price, etc. You can edit in bulk using bulk edit. Once you know what all skews are there, you can go ahead to proceed to editing. Now, Supposing you want to select, you want to add a different one, different price or different settings for each and every item, then you can click on individual SKUs. If you want to put in common settings for all of them at once, then you have to select all SKU at once. What that means is if I go to individual SKUs and let's say I set the sales channels, I go to sales channel, I just want to set the pricing for this. So I do that by click on sales channel. So you can click, you can go down to advanced pricing options. Let's say open this table 
and now you can see for each and every type of shutter you will be able to add in you can you will be able to exclude certain items if you click on modify sales channel values that particular table you will be able to set up the pricing for each and every one of them so here you can just click on custom you can click on this uh, you can click type in the value that you want put in tax put in margin etc and you can do this one by one for all of them that is provided that and you can see even the sales channels are there the price fields are also there so just so in that case just carefully uh, take a look at which one you're adding it for making the changes and once you're done you can select proceed to confirmation so now whatever modifications you have added are shown in green so you can you can see that you have added to if you click on sales channels here you can see that these are highlighted in green which means you made a change here and you have even made a change to some of these as well and if you're done you can select publish changes and exit so that in that way you'll be adding the you'll be making the change in bulk for the pricing so you can do that by going to sales channels and then clicking on the table under each and then making those particular changes so you can select this And this change will be notified of on the by mail itself. If you make an edit, if you make an edit to the structure, you will be notified by mail. If you just make a change to the bulk edit, like the normal properties, then you don't have to wait to be notified by mail. You can test it out in the design immediately. So this is how we can actually set for bulk edit pricing. But this is uh, one by one but what if you want to add a common a common type of properties to all of them at the same time that was the last thing i need to cover so if you select these go to bulk actions bulk edit click on proceed to editing now if i click on all skew at once and i now you can see that height is mixed width is mixed etc which means that you have to put a common one for all of them it'll be applied to all of them at the same time. Similarly, for pricing, click on sales channels. Here you can, you can map them all to a certain sales channel and you can unmap all of them from, let's say the default sales channel, you can do that. And then you can modify the sales channel values also. So if you check this box, you can put in the common price, you can put in the common unit, you can put in the common tax and margin also. And you can simultaneously exclude or include certain hardware from this. So if I click on this particular option, like this checkbox, and then exclude collectively certain appliances and handles, hardware, you can do that by clicking all skew at once and then entering this. So there are two ways in which you can bulk edit properties. Then once you're done, select proceed to confirmation. Okay, you're trying to modify and delete the sales same sales channel. Then I'll just I will not unmap from here. If I want to make the if I want to map it to Bangalore, then I can proceed to confirmation. And then if you want to make any changes to here, you can go back also. And you can put in whatever prices that you want. Go ahead to select to proceed to confirmation, select publish changes and exit. And a pop up will come up asking if you want to map it to, if you want to override the sales channels it's already mapped to, then you can click on OK if you are fine with those changes being made. Select OK. And now this change has been made in bulk. This pricing has been made in bulk and now you'll be able to check it in your design as well. If there's any change that has been made to this item, then you can refresh the SKU. So you can go to production, setting, refresh cache. So now you can see that these three shutters, these three units have been updated in the admin portal. 
and therefore you need to refresh the SKU cache. Then only it'll be updated in your design. So just you can open the details to see what all has been changed, old value and the new value, et cetera, like the tax, the prices, et cetera. Then you can go ahead and select continue. Check the box again, SKU cache, and click on apply. So now it'll be updated accordingly. And now when you go to global preference and settings, actually now if you refresh this page, so this unit was one of the items to which I had made price changes. So I'll just test it for this. Open global preference and settings. And here in you can click on active sales channels. Uh, select the one that you want it to be added to because I've only mapped it to Bangalore right now in bulk. Then you can run a pricing quotation for this production pricing. You can go ahead and continue with this. And then you can see that I've added the prices that I've, I've not added for Bangalore. So it's not showing, but the quantity, the unit quantity and all I have put in. So that is showing up. If you go to settings, pricing settings, you can choose from the sales channel and you can choose between these two as well. So this is a little bit on how to uh, put in the setup, the pricing. It's just a glimpse into setting up pricing in bulk. You can set in bulk for this. You can edit SKU properties in bulk and even the SKU structure in bulk. So since I very briefly uh, glanced over this topic, what all you can do in admin portal, uh, I'm sure you'll be having a lot of questions about this. So now the floor will be open to whatever questions you may have. So I'll just check them one by one. I have one thing to ask. All right. Uh, can we add the panels like uh, I have required 9 mm back panel, but in the catalog we have only 6 mm and 12 mm. Okay, so how can I add that 9 mm panel to the catalog? So this is for this is apply, right? Just to be clear, um, I think this is what you mean, right? Uh, you go to hardware and you go to apply, and you're seeing these, right? Right. So let's say this BWR ply. I think I think you are meaning the core material that you want to you want a nine mm one. Yeah, core material I want. Correct. So for that you need to go to hardware and then you need to go to ply. What we are basically doing is we will be cloning one of these plies and making it nine mm. So how do we clone this? Uh, we had I think it gone over this as well. So you can click on this edit skew icon you can click on or in this case it'd be better to edit to clone this entire group because you want it to be distinct click on clone group select this subcategory bw apply click on clone and i want to change the name to 9mm 9mm apply so you can name your this is the group's name and this is the item's name the skew's name and you can clone the sales channel mapping and prices and select clone. So now this 9mm ply has been created, but that doesn't mean it is actually 9mm. So to make it 9mm thickness, you need to go to edit skew again, edit skew properties. And since you own this particular skew, it shouldn't be a problem. So just change your thickness from six to nine. So then when you select update details, and just to double check whether this is actually 9 mm now, after you close this, click on edit skew structure just to check it. And this 9 mm ply is there. Um, okay, so you won't be seeing the ply here, but you can apply this in your design. So I'll just go back to my design and I'll try adding the ply here. One second. So 
So now if I click on this particular panel, go to panel uh, and set the material source to self. Code material, I can now add this. One second, this, I'll just try some other one. Self core material. Okay. Um, what you can do is if just if it's not if you're not getting the category that you want, right? So suppose for me, I'm just getting something called test. Right. Um, so just ensure that your uh, you can make you can remake this clone in your um, that particular subcategory. So now if I go to admin, I go to test, and I change this particular, I clone this or I change this existing one to nine mm. So I'm just making these changes. Click on change the thickness to nine. Update the details. Change this to nine mm. Update the details here. And then now I just go to my, I refresh the cache for the supply. And I refresh it. Then I reload this page. Mama, how did you refresh it? How did I refresh the cache? Yes, ma'am. Yes. So you have to go to, um, you need to click on production, click on setting, and click on refresh cache. Or you can just type in skew cache, like randomly, and you'll be getting this option here. So you have either of those choices. Now everything is up to date. So now it should be possible. I'll just try changing the panel thickness now. So now this 9mm ply has been added. So now I've changed it. So now you can see that this is a 9mm ply thickness. You can see the thickness of this is 9mm. You can see that the slight uh, that change has happened in this ply's thickness, right? According to the dimensions I've put in the admin portal and whatever else is being considered as the edge band, etc. And another doubt with this for 9 mm ply I have back then. Mm -hmm. uh, I have set it here global preferences, back panel extension from 5 mm to 8 mm. But when I download the cut list, I am getting only 5 mm uh, uh, extension only, not 8 mm. 5 mm okay you are uh, using the cut list uh, you're using the cut list option yeah i think that suggests that since this is a specific cut list related query uh you might want to uh, no, this is the log also you have from global preferences okay from global preferences i have uh, selected for wardrobe or cabinet uh back panel extension back panel extension uh yeah, yeah one second Where in were you? construction 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 itself yeah uh back panel back extension back. yes this one right this left one. yes so yeah here i have changed it from five to eight but uh, when i downloaded the cut list i was still getting five mm and uh, not eight mm extension Okay. Let's say left extension, you have done this, right? No, for all four sides I have done. All four sides, okay. And then when you try downloading the cut list for the same, um, yeah, one second, cut list. Okay, this is the back panel, isn't it? So this is yeah it must be this one for me it is showing that um the finished length is 
and 694. So since this is uh, reaching into cut list, this is something to do with how it's showing up in the cut list. Uh, may I ask who, what's the name of your um, CS, your customer success person? It's Aisha Upadhyay. Aisha. Uh, Aisha. Okay, your name is Dinesh Patel, right? You are from which organization? Right. Artisan Modulus Banaras. Artisan Modulus. Yeah. Okay. I suggest that since it's turning up in your cut list itself, uh, you take it up with her because it might be an issue. So it's with Aisha. Your issue is that the back panel is not uh, showing up in the. One more thing I have done here. Mm -hmm. Add the catalogs, uh, catalog section, admin portal, catalog section. There is also preferences setting. I have changed from there also. Preferences and setting. Here I have already changed it from 5 to 8 for back panel extension. But uh, the same problem is coming. I am not getting the 8 mm extension. Still, it was the 5 mm. Yes. Or Again, yes. Uh, so I'll notify her of this issue. Uh, you can also check with her, if, uh, please, because she might be able to guide I'll, you better since it's showing up in your cut find out this issue today only. Oh, yes. So I can notify her of this once the session is done. You can also you can also get in touch with her. She'll be able to help you better with this. OK. So back panel extension not showing up properly in the cut list. All right. Uh, One more thing I wanted to know. Uh, I have seen the visible in visible advance. Yes. We are getting uh, uh, advance uh, somewhere uh, we are not getting advance even the package. So can you please uh, refer, uh, explain this point, which are the visible advance and which are invisible advance in the cabinet? So you're not, uh, so you don't know which one how does it show in the design right yeah yes, yes. we are getting lots of options now that's why just like you have opened this preferences uh i wanted to know what is the back visible edge band back invisible edge band cartas visible edge band these yes. options are a little bit confusing yes no, actually yeah. it's quite uh, it's quite simple actually so uh you can see these green bands that are happening here right in this particular um, cabinet yeah. uh so whatever whatever are the exposed edges of the panels so those are called visible edges and to that visible edge band you have the choice of adding either adding or removing one since from here i've under visible edge band material for carcass i've selected green that's why it's showing up as green and but you can even uh, select copy of beige or whatever um, material that you want and it will be showing up in your um, carcass so, but this is visible now what about invisible so you can see that in some cases right i'll just hide this particular uh, countertop so you can see that uh, let's take this panel for instance uh, this top panel it has four edges like on all four sides it has edges but only you can only see this front one and you can see the back one so those are called the visible edges and the other two edges which is concealed by the left and right panel whatever's hidden it's like overlap. so what is a top panel front and back is visible and left right is the invisible so yes in this it depends on your construction so whatever is being overlapped by another panel and you can't see it it's being hidden from you. Those are invisible edges. And if you want, you can add a edge band to it. If you don't want also, you don't have to add it. But either way, you'll not be able to see it, except when you are adding it from the catalog. So you'll be knowing what kind of edge band you're adding into invisible edge band, but you'll not be seeing its implementation in the design. But in the cut list, it would show up. In the same manner, the shelf below the top panel, the front edge is visible and other Correct. three edges are invisible. That's right. Whatever's concealed is not visible. So those to that you can apply or not apply edge band. Same goes with the external one, the visible ones. And for the side panels, uh, 
फ्रंट एंड बैक इज विजिबल एंड टॉप इज विजिबल बॉटम इज इन विजिबल फॉर दिस नो बॉटम इज विजिबल यू कैन सी दैट so that's why you can see those for those those have been applied for, for side panels all those edges are visible correct in, in according to this particular construction yes now if i were to let's say if i were to go to construction and i go to um skirting no carcass and i change the construction let's say left bottom edge no left top edge i change to top on left so now this gets overlapped so now this edge becomes the visible one and this underneath becomes invisible so it changes automatically you have changed the from inside to outside now it's yes yes this is visible in the tight panel top edge is invisible correct i hope that concept is clear Yeah, now it's clear. Great. Now one issue in this concept is that if we want to change the edge band of the only front part of the carcass, only the front part of this, only the only front part of the carcass to be the color of the shutter. Ah, uh, can you repeat this question? Your uh, voice is kind of breaking. Ma'am, the front part How of the carcass. How can we change it? Color of राइट ओनली so this particular panel if i go and click on panel here materials and i have chosen the material source to be self right and from here you can set in the set a different um, edge band or whatever but now if you were to click on carcass it'll return back so now let's say you want only the front to be shown you want only the front to be shown yes, what you can be the color of the shutters and the rest to be the color of the carcass got it okay like that uh, so in that case so the uh, co solid colors that have been added so it's not necessarily matching with this it's just a solid color that happens to ma be matching with this now suppose you want to add a edge band that is somewhat similar to this right if you go to admin portal you go to catalog and you go to um, by the way edge band belongs to hardware so you go to hardware and you select term um, edge band So, let's say this. Um, so you can add these particular uh, materials as well. In this case, let's see. Um, this is this shutter option is this shutter color is uh, American maple. What you can try doing is you can try cloning American maple to this. So, which um, category does that belong to? Uh, I'll just check. It's in veneer. so i'll just go to admin i'll go to furniture i'll just go to this uh, finishes sorry veneer an american maple i will um clone it to edge band so since that is not exactly you can't um, clone it to the hardware category so that will not be possible but what you can do instead is um, you can down you can try downloading this material or try finding a material just like this so if i go to edits if i go to edit skew properties i'll just try cloning this first clone it first so that you can own the skew
now I'll just try cloning this. If it's not possible, then you'll have to just download it. So it's not really possible. So now I can just go to edit skew properties, material, and this texture is there. Hmm. Selected type of Let's see if it's there in warehouse. This, um, no, it's not there. What was this one originally? Okay, so these have actually been um, added by us. We had a similar property. That's why it's not owned by us. It was, it was owned by someone else. So they just added it here. So you'll have to find a similar material and you will have to load that particular material into this. So Siberian oak we already have. Now, if I want something like American maple, right? What you can do is you can click on edit group. So you can click on edit skew properties and clone this uh, skew to, let's say the same, this new group. And I just click on submit and I can type in shutter edge band. select submit you can put in the pricing if you want otherwise just let it be and since you may have noticed we don't uh, we can't find american maple here and we can't clone it from finishes to hardware what you can do instead is you can go to veneer you can go to american maple and you can click on uh, edit skew properties click on pricing sales sorry um can go to the owned one, edit skew properties, material, and you can take a screenshot of this particular material and save it. Or you can even load it from the internet if you can find it. But for now, you can save this and in down or in your system, you can type in the name of the material. So now when you go to your edge bands, You can change the material here. You can select change here. Click on shutter, click on open. Now this will be added. You can click on save changes. And once done, you can go ahead and close this. Now you may have noticed that I was not able to get the edge bands here. I'll just map just one minute. Can we? Change the height of the uh, edge band, whatever you added here. Like uh, like here you have, uh, I think, 22 by 0.8. Yes. I want it uh, 30 cross a 0.8. Can we change it? So if you click on uh, this properties, right? Let's say this one, edit skew properties. So you can change the thickness here and you can change the width of the tape. So this tape width is actually taken to accommodate that uh, panel thickness. So you can change the width here as well. So you said 30, right? Right. Because somewhere we require 30 also. Correct. And then thickness you can apply. You can add in um, point 0.8, is it? OK. Or any other thickness. And once you do that, you can update the details. Right. So now this is loaded in your catalog. Now, however, in this case, if I'm trying to upload a visible edge band, I'm only getting this particular uh, copy. Reason being is that I've this queue, I've this submit uh, cabinet itself, I've not mapped to the sales channel. So I'll just go to that furniture base unit and I'll just select that one. I'll just select this and I'll map it to the correct sales channel. So to do that, I'll just go to select channel to add. 
and the edge bands also need to be added to that so so make sure that uh, whatever materials are in there it's all mapped to the correct sales channel whichever one your uh, cabinet is in so now if i go to hardware if i go to edge band and i type shutter here and then i'll just make sure it's mapped correctly here i have to select i'll just type select bangalore also and then i'll click on close Now I'll just refresh this page. So now this edge band has been added. So I can make this, I can apply it to this particular skew and it'll match this shutter as well. It'll match this particular shutter. However, uh, the thing is that since this is these are visible as well, it will be applied to these back edges as well. The problem is that whatever is visible, like whether it is per panel or per carcass, unless you change the construction, like uh, you won't be able to, it won't be easy to change all of like certain uh, sides of it. That is not possible. You can't change certain visible sides of a carcass or a panel. To whatever color you want but if you want your edge band to match a certain finish you can do that and then you can apply it everywhere ma'am actually the issue was uh, we are using a thickness of 1.3 mm over the shutters and it is costly edge band in actual and for the carcass we are using 0.8 mm thickness and it is quite cheaper than that the of finish of shutters and okay. we just want to ma'am put uh, on only on the front four sides of the car carcass as it is costly for us so is it any option that in the cutting list we got the option of uh, edge banding of the shutter for the fr uh, front four sides just these are uh, carcass front four sides right yes ma'am uh, actually there is a difference of two mm one mm from all the sides so and the visible part is of ninety um, percent. We are using white color mica for the carcass. Got it. And, so uh, no, uh, <clears throat> it can't we have to we have to do it manually. It I don't I'm um, as far as I know it cannot be done selectively. Like definitely you can't be put in <laughs> per side. But uh, just to double check, you can also uh, check with uh, your particular uh, customer success person because. As far as I know, the adding it to a certain side is not possible because this is done either panel wise or it is done via it is done carcass wise. So that okay. is why. Yeah. Uh, yes. Um, Nitin Agarwal, yes, I'll send the recording for this session. You can contact your customer success person for this. I'll be sending this recording. This session is getting recorded. Uh, Pranay, Pranay Suttar, uh, washing machine, only two objects. There's no added library. Are you there? Mr. Pranay, are you there? OK. Are you oh. able to? You're not audible. Um, I can you elaborate on your question? I have one question here. Yeah. Can I ask you? Uh, just a minute. I think after. <laughs> I think someone else has also raised the hand. I can uh, I can attend to your query after that. Uh, yeah, junior design, junior designer. Are you there? Uh, 
uh, okay he doesn't seem to okay can you brief about the so okay uh rendering process uh we'll not we're not covering the rendering topic in this particular webinar but you can attend tomorrow's um you can edit you can uh, get in touch with your particular customer success person or she might he or she might be able to brief you on the basic steps on how to do that or if there are any particular um, issues that you're facing in your render you can attend the doubt session as well so today uh, for today's webinar we'll be entertaining catalog related questions only yeah yes sir dinesh patel tell me yeah in the catalog session yes we, uh, create our own folder structure create your own uh, folder structure yes what kind of structure are you thinking like uh, i'm not sure to what extent do you want to make the changes here is this one in front of us uh, uh, just like you are adding group na it is adding it is coming side by side okay uh, just we have some structure like tree structure or uh, in a, if i select a one um, first <coughs> group its sub category will we come uh, just after the main group just like i want the structure okay so you just want to change the way in which these items are appearing yeah uh sir i'm afraid that is a ui related issue that's not something that we can control it's basically just for the ease of selecting certain options right like let's say instead of like these names you want them to appear above each other below each other etc right? right yes i'm afraid that's not really something you can control from your end or from ours that is uh so that is at a program level yes uh we can only add the subgroup and name it whatever we want it okay or it will be shown as it is in the design section design interface please uh, repeat that question i it, like it had broken for me no okay you can continue no no uh, tell me tell me what was the i doubt? was just so that i asked about the folder structure na no? these these right these all are sub categories or main categories these are uh, groups these folders in the chair main main group these hmm. are the sub categories okay the, these are coming side by side or uh, there is another part, pattern in one line that is uh, in alphabetic order they are coming in side by i want from top to bottom <coughs> instead okay. of four things, four things in a line i want one thing got it uh it's yeah no no that time that is uh that is cannot be controlled by us i'm sorry okay. yes yes uh manu Mita, you have a question yes, now can you please please explain about the pricing um, what are the actual procedures of giving the pricing to the customer? You experienced three, four types today. Mm -hmm. But uh, I have adopted the pricing plan. But pricing is not yet started by my CSR. OK. Uh... What are the three, four procedures? How can we put the price to the customer? So in our uh, area, some people give prices by per square feet, ma'am. Yes. Some people give by per SKU. Yes. Some people give prices by the material use plus the we can can say the labor charge by our organization. So <coughs> what are the three think... four things, ma'am? Yes. So uh, let's say uh, you are subscribed to uh, know which uh, plan you subscribe to. Ma'am, I am manufacturing and the advanced pricing. Okay. Okay. And you want to do this uh, for, let's say, your base unit, right? Ma'am, for uh, we have to set for all the units. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, please uh, let me know what is the best procedure to proceed for that. 
I'll just show. So it's all dependent on your organization and how they want to do it. <laughs> now let's just take the example of a cabinet that you want to price. I'm showing yeah. this cabinet because you can demonstrate all different ways in which you can uh, price it. So let's say I'm making, I'm adding a price to this particular shutter unit, and I choose Edit Skew Properties, and I select Pricing here. Now different ways in which you can price it so you you can see under here that there is if you are setting up the price for the entire unit based on either a per unit basis or the per unit area of the unit like suppose um, it the unit is 560 into 560 into 900 to 400 so those two dimensions will be multiplied and it will be um, i think it's the height and the not width. the height, the depth and the width. That the that particular that particular square footage area will be considered here. So when you set you when you put it as price is completely built unit and you put in like a per area unit, that doesn't mean it's taking all the materials and the price the hardware pricing into consideration. No, this is for the entire unit. But in your case, since you have since you have the other subscription as well, you even have this option which is called price from its constituent elements. So when you do that, you can click on change CPU status, and then you can set this to be priced as sum of all the constituent elements, which means whatever materials are used in this particular cabinet, you'll have to set a price for each and every one of them, the hardware, the finish, et cetera. And then, and whatever changes you make there, in any case, this cabinet will be priced as a sum of all of those, right? Okay, okay. Now, for that, we have to make the addition of each and every part. Sometimes we are using BWR ply. Sometimes we are using BWP ply. Correct, sometimes correct. Sometimes we are using HDHMR, and sometimes yes. we are using uh, the for the laminates. There are a lot of finishes, as we do not set our catalog right, right now. Got it. Uh, we we have a new organization. It's it will take some time for us to just pass 10, 10 20 sheets for the laminates. But now the uh, we are going with that any uh, shade that customer selected. We proceed with that. Got it. So like supposing you are um, adding like you are putting up a different uh, like a certain ca acrylic shade for se several cabinets at once, right? Or BWR no, ply, whatever. Any option, we, we said for that, uh, I said for that base unit. If we are using with the BWR ply and 1 mm laminate, and the finish will be any then. And if we are using for BWP ply and for the 1 mm laminate, uh, so can we set for that? For 3 4 um, I say 3 yes, 4 so, SQ. Yes, yes. So. <laughs> Supposing you are, um, let's say you go to your ply catalog in hardware, and you, let's let's assume you are using like all of these, and you want to set prices for all of this, right? Like uh, different different prices. Yes. Oh, uh, by the way, like if the these are none of what you are using, then you can always clone and change the thickness, like I was explaining. But supposing you want to add different different prices for these plies, correct? Yes, ma'am. Yes, so then you need to you can do bulk edit. Uh, you can select these queues, uh, and you can go to bulk actions and click on bulk edit because that is for pricing. So now you can proceed to editing once you see that okay, these are the ones that I've selected. Click on that. Uh, if you're putting a common price for all of them, like for example, you're putting 25 per square foot for all of them, then you can go to all skewed ones. But if you're putting different ones, select individual skews. And then go to sales channel and then um, make sure that you're mapping it to the correct sales channel, right? Uh, so you can choose the ones that you want to map it to. Um, I think in your case, anyway, it'll be mapped to default. Then you can go to modify sales channel values. When you click on this table, you can see here that there's the prices, that, no, there's a price, the per unit tax, everything you can set up. So whenever you then just set it to custom and you can make whatever changes that you want. 
set the unit as per your wish and the margin that the price is over here so can it calculate the wastage of the ply the wastage of the ply will show when you are uh, running the cut list so that is shown on the board layout but if yeah, we layout. Let's say, uh, you put the value of 23 per square feet over here okay but the, uh, from the 32 square feet of the ply we have used only 25 square feet and there okay. is a wastage of nearly 20 percent over there you then the costing of 23 will go to uh, nearly nearly 27.6 on an uh, average basis okay uh no, to answer your question you will not be seeing the you'll not be able to see the wastage uh, firsthand here because whatever price you set is uh, based on uh, like what the organization no, decides. over here we have we have set for the uh, over costing over here but to the customer actually if we're using 10 plies but uh, the software calculates over the actual material we deliver to the customer well, for example, there is 32 square feet in one ply, and for 10 ply, it's 320 square feet. But for the production, we have used only, let's say, 250 square feet, and the 70 square feet goes, goes to the wastage. Okay. So that. So but that we want to charge the full cost of 320 square feet from the customer that we have entered uh, from the warehouse to the factory. Got for it. The Okay. Uh, all right. I suggest I suggest that um, you can check with this further uh, since this is going further into the cut list and manufacturing uh, section. So you can actually confirm with uh, your uh, CSS uh, Suman or no, Aisha. Ma Aisha, Aisha ma yes, you can check with her like whether you'll be able to see this wastage in other aspects as well. As far as my knowledge, the board layout is what you'll be able to see the wastage used up and in terms of the percentage that is in terms of cost i have not uh, you'll certainly not be able to see it here but uh mainly in the board layout you'll be able to see it but you can okay, check will, with her okay i will check with her ma'am one 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 or two more questions can i put over here uh, go ahead ma'am one question is that we are using 60 mm bwr apply Okay. Yes, and play uh, on pasting 0.72 mm thickness of the laminate over that. Yes. Okay, for the carcass. Yes. But uh, if we go to the panel and go to the dimensions, it uh, take the thickness of 18 mm. Thickness of 18 mm. Okay. Uh. Well, it by default it takes one mm thickness for the laminates. Yes. Yes. Can we but, put that 0.72 mm thickness over here? Yes, you can change the laminate thickness also. That's what you want to know, right? Yeah. Yes. Again, go to the laminate of your choice. Uh, ensure that you own the skew. Click on edit skew properties. Thickness. Set it to 0 0.72. It'll okay, be okay. registered. Then you can update the details. Yes. Now, the other question is, I am using manufacturing plan. OK. Mom, what I, I I don't know right now we what I get extra from the basic uh, plan of the cutting and board layout. What's the difference in manufacturing plan and the basic plan? What extra I am getting for that? Meaning if you are uh, getting like what is the difference of the features you're getting for manufacturing, right? Yes, ma'am. From the basic plan to manufacturing plan. Yes, basic plan. If you go to production, right? If you're in the basic plan, you wouldn't even be able to access your cut list or your board layout, raw materials, or even see, you know, um, load any fulfillment tags that can be fed into the machine when it's time for manufacturing. And now, cut list is available in the basic plan of cutting lists. Is it still available? Mom, I have manufacturing plan right now. Yeah. Actually, from the next month, your company will charge a uh, well, extra amount for the board layout plan. It will give you only one thousand panel for the with the base plan. After that, it will charge rupees two per panel with the cutting panel uh, and uh, rupees four per panel for the manufacturing plan. Okay. Actually, I want to know what I act uh, actually uh, get for that manufacturing uh, 
though the person who sells me the software uh, i think he is mr just a second man mr gulshan okay so the uh, for first person to sell me the software of infania he said me uh, company will give me the <coughs> actual petition of the multi boring actual petition for the screwing actual petition for the hinge so is that available with me for that uh, in manufacturing yes I, I, be... i just want to know the difference in basic cutting board layout plan and overall manufacturing plan uh, exactly so whatever hinges hardware everything that you put in you will not be able to see those unless you are subscribed to the manufacturing plan the way the position of where the mini fixes doubles connectors are set up all those rules will be set up for you uh, no sorry all of those rules can be set up once the uh, once you are subscribed to manufacturing plan okay ma'am can But, i get the actual positioning of the quadro for the inotech tandems the actual positioning for the quadro um, mam for the tandem channels that can also be set up but uh, that will that you'll be able to um, see once you have like at least the connectors and everything you'll be able to see once you have uh, let's say we have a, the, the height of the 720 mm yes and we go with the base unit uh, we have three door mam unit and we go with the base unit to be 360 mm and for the upper 360 mm we cut it into two parts let's say 160 mm and 200 mm the top one to be 160 mm the second one to be 200 mm and the third one is to be 360 mm the three of them complete to be 760 mm okay mam, so i like want for for the first 160 mm what is the actual position so that i can mark over here from the factory so that the fitter the person who going to fitting i can save his time so you will be you, like you are setting you are saying uh, this you are setting up the heights for um, i just sorry i didn't i don't the, understand the, the, the screen the screen you are presenting over here yes it has four shelves okay yeah Mom, I want that uh, on the left panel and on the right panel. If from inside, a uh, marking is done by the software, or a chart will be given by the software that uh, at which point exact we have to screw for that shelf, or for the drawer at which at which point we have to ex exact screw. That all can be so that can be determined by you once, uh, like if you are using this. So uh, how exactly this is done, you can check with Ash also. but you we won't be able to feed in information related to this man like the screw drilling and all that without manufacturing ma'am i have manufacturing is it available with me over you here? will be like they'll be able to you'll be able to set it up also you can ask um, asha about that okay i will discuss with you that yes, Actually, yes. Oh, we are busy for the last two months it's my first plan for the first quarter for the first two months we are busy with the design only ma'am Okay, got Actually, it. Actually, first time I am using the, uh, such a software, so it's thoda muskil hai mere liye design sikhna ma'am. Okay, okay. Uh, oh, but I actually from next month my plan is expiring. I want to know the actual feature features of the entire software, but I am getting in that amount. That's why I am asking question over here. No got idea. it. I will discuss with Aisha ma'am. No issue. Ma you can discuss with her. Yes. Okay. Thank you. All right. No problem. So I think we have uh, covered around forty-five minutes of uh, doubts. So that will bring us to the end of the session. So. Uh, hello. Yes. Hello. Yes. I have just a small doubt. Um, For pricing issue, actually we we lied uh, pricing in the global provinces and settings now. Sorry, the pricing. Sorry, the materials, the core materials and laminates we will add in the global preferences and settings. Uh, yeah, for whatever default, so global preferences and settings. You can set up the materials if you want all of your cabinets mm -hmm. to have that particular material. 
like whatever you add in the future not mm -hmm. for your present ones so ah, that is the okay. use of that is, is it the, applicable for shutters also shutter materials yes shutter designs suppose there are a lot of designs in shutters no yes you'll be able to set the preference for that also um but sometimes it is coming like uh, for shutters it is showing the uh, more pricing than the panel i compared a panel and a shutter with the same materials but there is a lot of difference is there yeah because the yes because the pricing you need to set up uh, in the admin portal like uh, what is this uh, price you have set up in admin portal in global preferences and settings yeah, you don't uh, you shouldn't set the you can't set the pricing in uh, the global preferences and settings design yes. yes you can set it yes after setting the prices in admin portal mm -hmm. i am asking about the pricing after the core material selecting for the both the shutter and panel mm. well taking a any quotation shutter is taking much more right yes so let's say cabinet shutter but the materials are same it depends on how you have priced it also let's take this as an example own mm. right and you go to edit skew properties so just check when you go to pricing just check whether this is you have set up a pricing per unit of the shutter like per uh shutter area or whether you have uh chosen it based on you know the mid the ply the materials um everything that has been added to the shutter if it is the second one then it may be coming huge because the um laminate materials the external finishes whatever is going into that the rate is high which is probably why it is coming up to that much but if you select um shutter price from shutter design then you have the option of either setting the price yourself per unit of uh, like okay. per shutter or per the total area of that uh, door actually we are in the advanced price area. so you have two options so you have both of these options you can double check with that one suppose if i take a panel with the same materials and if i take a shutter with the same materials both will they both will come in the same price next time can you repeat that if you've chosen the same uh, panel you have chosen the same finish and the same uh, panel that you have chosen same, for the carpet. same materials for panel and same materials for shutter okay if i get the quote both will come in the same price or any difference it will be uh it so shutter should be coming for less because okay, you should also be considering if you are uh, excluding hardware or not like even hardware will be considered so the hardware price also will be counted in that no no, no i already checked uh, after excluding hardware i mean hinges handles also it is showing the more price than this panel you are not understanding why this much difference is coming there uh, are you near your system by any chance can you show mm -hmm. me but it will take some time to load i need to log in now okay no problem uh so for your uh, so i you're saying that uh, for your cabinet you have uh, excluded hardware etc also right yes not for cabinet for the shutter only shutter hmm. actually we have checked with just uh, two to with a small amount i mean just one panel and just one shutter to see the pricing after giving pricing of laminate 20 20 rupees or 50 rupees after giving price for edge band 20 rupees okay so like what happens is when you exclude let's say you've excluded um, hardware like a uh, handle etc from the shutter which you have say, said you have done right yes. uh Uh, since i'm not able to see your design uh, i can only uh, try and offer this as a solution so actually what excluding hardware does is that you it doesn't reduce the price it actually increases the price because now the hardware whatever has been it's been taken out of the shutter and whatever price has been added to that it'll be readded 
like per unit it won't be added as part of the shutter so your price will increase by excluding the hardware if it was included your price would reduce you can check that if that is the case if not you can um, you can check with your cs once she might be able to take a look at the problem yes that's okay fine right no okay. is there any price for design also i mean do we need to add any price for design also for the shutter design yes there is a lot of designs you know in shutter so whichever ones you want to apply to your uh, your unit yes um, it will be better to set up the price whether it's based on elements or it's based on per unit after the materials also it will take and this pricing also it will take the material price and this design price also no if you uh, choose it based on the um, if you choose it based on shutter design it will only consider what you have put per the design if you have chosen based on constituent elements it will consider the materials that you have put in so it's either one or the other okay 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 fine thank you all right uh, yes deepa sharma um yes you can import um, autocad 2d drawing if you are there okay so uh, that would bring us to the end of the session so thank you everyone for joining me today so this session will be recorded along with the earlier catalog as well so with the earlier catalog webinar as well so in that case we can uh, yeah how to import um, 2d drawing so that's that you can uh, ask your cs also but to just to be very brief you can go to your flow plan uh, then you can go to your floor settings that's tracing background dwg file and select upload slash change dwg and then you can load the autocad file of your choice and then you can select um, open so this you can there are there's a tutorial available for this also you can check it out whenever you want right so Yes, with that, um, thank you so much for joining us. So you can ask your customer success person for the recording for both catalog part one and two to get a better picture. Yes, thank you so much and good night everyone.